In Europe, the union remains in disunion. This time, it's Germany and Poland. They're at odds over the war in Ukraine. They can't agree on how much military aid should be given. Clearly, Europe has bitten off more than it can chew here. Poland says Germany is slowing them down. It has a long list of complaints against Germany. They're fighting over missiles, tanks and spare parts. It all began when the West decided to give tanks to Ukraine. Initially, Germany was reluctant, but it came around. Berlin, with other European partners, agreed to transfer more than 100 tanks to Kiev. The announcement was made in January. Last week checked, Germany is yet to make the transfer. And now Poland says Germany's support is half-hearted because tanks will not be enough. Poland says Germany should also share spare parts with Ukraine. This is basically about the Leopard tank. Both Germany and Poland are sharing these tanks with Ukraine, but some of these tanks are old, so they might need spare parts. Poland says spare parts is ne are necessary. Without the parts, the tanks will be of limited use to Kiev. And now the Polish president has spoken out. Listen to what Andrzej Duda said last week, and I'm quoting. The main responsibility rests with the Federal Republic of Germany, the main producer of those tanks. We've been urging the German side for so long to join the tank coalition and not only deliver the tanks, but also the spare parts. Last month, Poland delivered four tanks to Ukraine. It was the first set of deliveries. The Polish prime minister himself went to Ukraine for a photo op. Dear soldiers, we brought the first four leopards from Poland in order for you to chase away the Russian aggressor as soon as possible. Thank you for your bravery. Poland came out ahead. It gave the leopard tanks, but they came with the same problem. They're old and they're no longer in production. So finding parts is going to be difficult. And this could further affect ties. You see, Poland and Germany are neighbors and they don't get along on a host of issues. The tensions erupted last year when Poland demanded compensation from Germany. Compensation for what? Damages caused in the Second World War. Do you know how much money Poland is asking for? $1.3 trillion. Last year, Polish lawmakers started a campaign. They want wartime damages and reparations from Germany. Warsaw says, the invasion by Nazi Germany led to losses worth over $1 trillion. Berlin promptly rejected that demand, but Poland's ruling party is in no mood to give up. In truth, Germany has never paid for the crimes it committed against Poland. We know that the road will be long and difficult. We don't expect successes soon. I've already heard a very important German politician say that no German government will accept it. But they did not. Germany doesn't even consider this to be an issue. Poland was offended. Look at what Poland's foreign minister said in January, and I'm quoting again. The answer shows an absolutely disrespectful attitude towards Poland and Poles. Germany does not pursue a friendly policy towards Poland. It wants to build its sphere of influence here and treats Poland as a vassal state. Now, the neighbors are fighting over Ukraine, and it could escalate. Also because of domestic politics, Poland goes to polls in October this year. And in Poland, the public sentiment is against Germany. Lawmakers are capitalizing on that. So some of the angry exchanges could just be to whip up public support. What about Germany? What does Berlin say in its defense? Last month, the German defense minister spoke out. He attacked Warsaw. Boris Pistorius said he had doubts about the Polish tanks. He believes they're not operational. But what about the German tank deliveries? When is Berlin sending tanks to Ukraine? There are no fixed dates yet. Last month, Pistorius did say that Kiev will get the tanks by the end of March. Germany is training Ukrainian soldiers on these tanks. And outside Europe, the war in Ukraine is getting more attention. Japan, for instance, is making moves. It is reaching out to India. In fact, the Japanese prime minister is planning a trip to India. He could come to India later this month. And this will be important for many reasons. Japan is the serving president of the G7 this year. That's a group of seven, a grouping of the world's seven richest countries. In that capacity, Japan wants to work closely with India, the G20 president. Japan feels that it could use India's help to deal with some of the pressing challenges. The outcome of this meeting will be closely watched.